Hey guys, I'm John Hanson with that video game blog, and the E3 conferences are over, and now we just got the rest of the week to look at gameplay from all these new games and everything. But I wanted to take a quick look back at all of the conferences and kind of give my initial thoughts on them. Granted, these are all uh, just my personal feelings and thoughts on things you may think different. Uh, just let us know what you think in the comments down below. Uh, I will let you know that. I gave myself a little outline of things to talk about. Uh, it's just to show that I've become professional. <laughs> so uh, I want to start from what I thought was the worst and end with the best for the conferences. And starting off, uh, I thought EA by far had the worst conference this year. Uh, my plan is to kind of give a good, bad, and ugly for each conference. Uh, the good for EA is uh, Unravel 2. Uh, I wasn't really expecting another Unravel. I liked the first one a little bit, but it didn't blow me away as much as I thought it did, as it would. Uh, beautiful game, and uh, the addition of co-op makes this a really cool thing. It was awesome that it's available now. I love that kind of stuff. Uh, also, Sea of Solitude. It was another indie game, and it looked beautiful. Uh, I was really interested in it. Uh, I know a lot of people were given the lady that was talking during the conference crap about it, but I thought she did fine. She was a little nervous and kind of went on and on, but it was it was cool seeing her talk about how she uh, wrote the game in a very dark place. Uh, moving on to the bad of the EA conference, the Madden segment was terrible. Um, they brought out this young kid guy, Kiv? I, I can't remember. Uh, guy won the Madden Championship, and I just didn't care for him at all. I thought he looked like a complete douchebag. Um, did not look like a cool guy to hang out with. Did not care what he had to say. Uh, I probably related more <laughs> with uh, what's his name? Juju Smith, the Pittsburgh Steelers uh, wide receiver. Um, yeah, I thought that was a terrible segment, and it went on way too long, and was just had awkward small talk between the two. It was not a good time. Uh, the Command and Conquer game on mobile, uh, while I don't really care that it is a mobile game and that it's free to play and everything, I know there were a lot of Command and Conquer fans that were mad about this. Um, I personally didn't care about that. I cared more about them getting broadcasters, or shoutcasters, whatever you want to call them, that they got people to shoutcast a mobile game like that was stupid and the thing went on way too long I feel like they could have just put up a trailer explaining what the game was like what you needed to do and it would have been just fine uh, they spent way too much time on the Command and Conquer mobile game and it just did not pay off uh, also uh, for me this is my last bad point for EA Anthem like, what they did with Anthem really killed the hype for me. Uh, this is actually kind of going on to my uh, first ugly thing with EA. Uh, the Q&A session with Anthem was not good. It was dumb. And, okay, you could have just told me that it was... That there was a bunch of customization. You didn't have to, like, pull up Facebook. You didn't have to have the sit-down interview with them and everything. Just show me an interview. Do a quick gameplay trailer show me what's going on what i can do don't like take all this time to just have a q and a it didn't work it was awkward uh and that also goes into just the crowd reaction to like everything like with andrew renee i like her and everything she's cool and i thought she did a good job with what she was given but like her trying to talk with the crowd and get them into the stuff it just wasn't happening and it was very awkward and uh, I just don't think it worked out well uh, I guess I could have put this in the bad because it's not really an ugly but the respawn Star Wars uh, segment where uh, what's his name Vince Zampella Vampella uh, head of respawn did a little talking about the new Star Wars game that they're, they're making um, they just had Andrea come out to the crowd, sit by him, and be like, Hey, so you want to tell us something? Oh, yeah, we're excited to announce that we are working on a Star Wars game. Which we knew, was it last year? Where they first said, Hey, 
Respawn is making a Star Wars game, like, at least show us something. Give us a little logo. Give us anything. Don't just tell us that you're working on a game when we already know you're working on it. Uh, it did <laughs> It was kind of pointless. And it overall, the EA conference was a waste of time. Uh, the only game I had excitement for was Anthem. They completely took all excitement I had for that game out of it. Uh, there was... N okay, Sea of Solitude and Unravel 2 look cool, but I don't see myself playing Unravel 2. Sea of Solitude I will definitely take a look at when it comes in, because I do like EA's indie games that they've been making the last couple years. But, uh, yeah, everything else at that conference was just a waste of time. So, uh, my grade for EA is D. It was downright lame, let's say. <laughs> yeah. uh, next up, I have the Square Enix conference, or uh, stream, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to just call them all conferences, even though I know technically there's a couple that aren't. Uh, some good for Square. Tomb Raider, or Shadow of the Tomb Raider? Look great, I thought. Uh, I've loved the first two reboot Tomb Raiders. I thought they were a great time. I'm excited to get into this one. Uh, it was good to see some gameplay, not just trailers. So I was happy with that. Uh, the Final Fantasy XIV crossover with Monster Hunter. Really cool. I I don't care about Final Fantasy XIV. I've never played it. I'm not a Monster Hunter fan. I don't care about that at all. Just having a crossover for fans of these two franchises that, are, that have had some hardcore fans for a long time. It's just awesome to see them do a crossover. So I'm happy for them, even though I will never touch this or even think about touching it. Uh, the bad in the uh, Square, Enix, Square Enix conference is no Avengers. Like, when did they first announce this? Last year before E3 or was it after E3? I was just hoping for something. Give me a trailer. Give me anything. To just let me know. Give me a quick summary of how this is going on. Don't do it like the respawn thing and just, hey, we're working on it. Like, just give me something. I just wanted anything to just build up my hype for this. I was completely let down when I saw that there was no Avengers at E3 whatsoever. Uh, it's very disappointing. Maybe Marvel wanted to focus on Spider-Man or something. I don't know. I doubt it. It's... And it, it just really uh, nails down the fact to me that uh, we're not getting this game for at least a couple years. Uh, I could be wrong, but that's just my opinion. I uh, really was hoping to see something from Avengers. Uh, the ugly for Square was, all in all, it wasn't a very exciting show. Uh, they didn't really show anything new. Like, the Final Fantasy stuff was new, the A, uh, a Quiet Man was new. That game didn't personally interest me at all. Uh, it just wasn't exciting. Uh, even the Kingdom Hearts trailer that they shown, which I'm a huge Kingdom Hearts fan, and I'm so ready for the new game. Um, even though it had a few differences, it was 90% the same trailer that we they showed at the Microsoft conference. It Overall... Pretty disappointing conference, but it wasn't a waste of time like EA was. I still had a good time with the things I did like in there, but the things I just didn't care for, like I just didn't care. Um, so overall, I would give Square Enix a C for uh, this E3. Next up, I've got Bethesda. Now, uh... I can already hear you all typing away in the comments down below how terrible it is that I have Bethesda so low, but here we go. Uh, the good for Bethesda is Fallout 76. Uh, once they showed that off and went real depth, real in-depth into it, I realized that this is probably the game I am most excited for besides Super Smash Brothers. Uh, that's coming out this year. Uh, I'm totally buying into the online aspect of it. I think it's going to be a lot of fun to play with friends. Uh, Fallout 4 was the first one that I really got into uh, from uh, either uh, Fallout or Elder Scrolls perspective. 
I'm really excited to give this game a try. Uh, I think their release date of, I think it's November 15th? Uh, I think that's a direct fuck you to Red Dead Redemption 2, saying, hey, we're not backing off from you. Uh, I think they're pretty confident in their game, and I'm excited to see more on it, and or just play it. Uh, I'll definitely have to try and get into the beta. Uh, definitely a game I am looking forward to. Uh, Doom Eternal. I love the first Doom. I am so excited that they announced a new one. was kind of disappointed that there was no uh, release date with it. Uh, hopeful thinking is that it comes out next May. Uh, I believe that was when the last Doom came out, and like I said, that was an awesome game. I loved it. Uh, definitely my second favorite game to come out that year behind Overwatch. Uh, campaign was awesome. We're getting hell on earth this time seeing more demons uh doom guy is going to be even more unstoppable i can't wait that's just going to be an awesome ride uh let's see oh the skyrim joke uh that uh they put skyrim on everything and they had keegan michael key play it on alexa on a fridge and i think an etch a sketch like that was just a funny little side thing and I thought it was a joke going in, but I saw that the Alexa thing is real, like they actually made it, so that's pretty cool. Uh, I'm not much of an Elder Scrolls fan, but I kind of want to try it on uh, Alexa just to say I've tried it. Uh, it's interesting, and uh, I don't know, it was just really funny, and probably the funniest thing from E3 this year. Uh, going on to the bad of Bethesda. I know this excited a lot of people, but the Elder Scrolls 6 reveal was not good. Uh, all they did was show a logo, and everyone lost their mind. It's not like this was a secret. Uh, one, because Skyrim was such a hit, of course they're going to make another Elder Scrolls. But two, they've said for what, two years now that they're working on it? This is just pretty much them saying once again, hey, we're working on it. Like, we've known this. They've come out and said, hey, we're not ready to announce it but we are working on it. Todd Howard has said himself, I believe at last E3, yeah, we're working on it, we're just not ready for it. It's, I don't get the point of showing so little now, but still putting a logo out there, like, yes, we know it's Elder Scrolls. They didn't even give a tagline for it. Didn't tell us where it is, what's going on, nothing. Just, hey, yes, we're working on it. Which is what we already knew. This is just like the Respawn Star Wars game thing. We know you're working on it. Don't tell us again. Just give us something new. It, it was a waste of time. And I know a lot of people got excited for it, but it was dumb. Uh, the the Star game that they announced, uh, Star... I want to say Star Citizen, but I don't think that was it, was it? I can't remember. Um, no, nah, not Star Citizen, that's the crowdfunding one. Oh, this is gonna drive me insane. The space game that they announced right before that, even though there were a ton of rumors about that, and they pretty much just showed a, a short little teaser, a little uh, logo for that too, I was okay with that because it wasn't officially announced. With Elder Scrolls Six, Todd Howard himself has come out and said, yes, we're working on it. So, like... It was just a stupid, cheap way to get everyone excited, and it for nothing, really. Uh, he said it's next-gen, so who knows how long it's going to be before we actually see the game. Like, it could be another two years before they show anything. Two, three years. Uh, who knows? Uh, the ugly with Bethesda, the... <laughs> the most ugly part of the Bethesda conference was definitely the Rage 2 concert. Uh, what's his name? Andrew W.K.? I, I have no idea. Uh, all in all, I thought he had an awesome show. He did great. He was exhilarating. He was into it. He was having a good time, trying to get everyone else to do it. The band sounded good, and it was a catchy song. I didn't mind it. Uh, I thought the band itself did fine. The crowd was not into it at all. And, like, all of the shots into the crowd and seeing their faces, like, uh, what, what do I do here? What do I do? 
This is a rock concert? What? What is this? It was not a good time. Uh, let's uh, not do that again, but that said, that was... That had my anxiety, like, going through the roof just watching it. Oh, it was an awkward situation. Band did good, though. Um, and then my last uh, ugly part for Bethesda was the Elder Scrolls Blades, uh, the phone game. Uh, not necessarily because I don't think it's cool that they're getting Elder Scrolls into a phone game, which, it, by the way, it kind of looks like they did an awesome thing. I just don't care. I just don't care about Elder Scrolls, and that's just a personal thing. This, Like I said, all of this that we're going over is a personal list. I just don't care about Elder Scrolls. I don't care about it coming to a phone. Maybe people are excited about it. I personally... I just don't get in the phone games anyway. Um, overall, I'll give Bethesda a B, uh, but they are still bottom three of the conferences this year to me. Uh, I liked, like I said, I love that Doom Eternal got to announce. Uh, Fallout 76 is one of my most looked forward to games of this year, but all the other stuff, I just didn't care. And this, it does. that's not to say that I thought it was a bad show or anything. I mean, I gave them a B, which is a pretty good score in my opinion. Um, they just didn't come out as much, they didn't come out and wow me as much as I wanted them to. And I just didn't care about the Elder Scrolls stuff. I, the Rage 2 stuff, I, I looked at it, I'm like, okay, I could give it a try. Uh... There was awkward moments with the Rage 2 developers talking to each other. It, I don't know. It did okay, but it wasn't amazing. Um, next up, I have Ubisoft. Uh, for the good for them, Trials Rising. I was not expecting a new Trials game, and I'm pumped. I loved the last uh, two, uh, Evolution and Fusion. I loved the last two Trials games. Uh, had a lot of fun with them. I'll definitely be looking forward to this one coming out especially it looks like they're have, putting more of an emphasis on a multiplayer which is exciting to me but I don't care I'd play it regardless uh, next up Division 2 I thought it looked really good I'm getting more and more excited for it the more I see about it set in Washington DC a more interesting background it's like spring or summertime now and it's not just a snowy dead area uh, hopefully they take care of the Dark Zone better in this game. Uh, there's going to be raids. Uh, I heard they've made changes to the damage system. Like, uh, enemies aren't as spongy anymore. So I'm excited to see more of that. Uh, the last division I played a lot of, and before the DLC came out, I actually 100%ed the base game. Uh, but once the DLC came out, I just never went back to it. Just I was done. Um, next up, uh, the Donkey Kong section. Uh, it was a Mario and Rabbids expansion that's featured around Donkey Kong. Um, they had Grant Kirkhope come out and play some Donkey Kong hits, which I thought was awesome. They just had a screen up that was showing, uh, different, uh, trailer parts for the expansion, and uh, Kirko played like a ton of different Donkey Kong songs, which was awesome. I loved that. It was pulled off so well, in my opinion. It looked great. Uh, I haven't played Mario and Rabbids, but I thought that whole presentation of that was really awesome, and I wish they would have made it more clear if you could play as Mario, Luigi, Peach, and Yoshi, but they didn't. So I'm kind of tossed up, because they had a uh, they had Donkey Kong, a Cranky Kong Rabbit, and then the Mario and Peach Rabbits, which the Peach Rabbit is like the most uh, popular one, I think. Uh, so that didn't surprise me, but I wanted to see if you could play as the other guys as well. Can I play as Mario, Luigi, Yoshi? Maybe I'll give this a try whenever I get around to playing Mario Rabbits. But I don't know. Overall, I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, Beyond Good and Evil 2 looked awesome. They had another outstanding trailer for it. They actually showed a little bit of pre-alpha footage. Um, I thought also the teaming up with Justin Gordon-Levitt's uh, company, the 
outsource material to put on there. Uh, it's awesome. Get the fans involved. Like I, I'm not an, any real artist, but I thought about like trying to draw up something to put in there. Uh, ah, it looked like an awesome thing. Uh, still no idea when this game is gonna come out. I think my prediction before was like March, but that was after looking at it. I was like, oh wait, that's a terrible uh, prediction. Like this game is years off still. I just thought that they were working on it a little longer than they actually were. Uh, oh, and just a quick one, uh, the Starlink with Star Fox in it was awesome, although I was disappointed it was just Starlink and not a new Star Fox game. I was kind of hoping Ubisoft was making a Star Fox game. I think that would be a lot of fun. But anyone that's looking forward to Starlink, get it, get it on Switch and play a Star Fox because he's going to be the best character. Uh, the bad for the Ubisoft conference is definitely Rainbow Six Siege. Uh, they came out and said, hey, thank you for supporting the game. There are 35 million players on it, which is probably how many different accounts have played it over time, not how many are playing it currently. But that's still a big number. That's very impressive. It's very impressive when you think about how uh, slow it started out when the game first launched. Uh, they've done a great job with the game. I personally haven't played it in probably two years now, year and a half. But when I was playing into it, I was really into it. Uh, great game, a lot of fun. Uh, I'd like to give it a try again. But they didn't announce any new operators, no new maps. All they announced was a documentary about, I think it was about pro Rainbow Six Siege players. Or maybe it was a documentary about the making of the game itself, which I think would be cooler if it's about the pros. Get that out of here. I don't want to see that. That was just a very odd sequence, and I don't know. It, I just thought it was weird that it was in the press at all, or the conference at all. Uh, and then all I have for my ugly for Ubisoft is that they didn't really show anything new. Uh, The only uh, new game I think that was shown off was Trials Rising, which was by far the game that got me the most excited. Um, otherwise, we knew about every other game. Uh, Assassin's Creed Chronicles? Is that what it was called? I think... No, no, not Chronicles. Odyssey. Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which I think looks awesome. I probably won't play it yet because I haven't played Origins yet. But uh, I look forward to that game. I thought it looked really good. But we knew it was coming already. Division 2, we knew it was coming. Starlink, we knew it was coming. The Donkey Kong thing, we knew it was coming. Uh, Rainbow Six, I mean, that just didn't show anything at all. So, like, they didn't show anything new besides Trials Rising, which was awesome. But, I don't know, I was hoping for something new, something more. Just, I, I get that maybe they just don't have anything to work on right now. Well, besides what they're working on at the moment, nothing to show is what I should have said. Um, I don't know. That was kind of disappointing. So, my grade for Ubisoft is a B plus. They did good. Uh, it was a very good conference. It wasn't amazing. It wasn't very surprising besides trials. Uh, but it had a good flow to it. Even like the Just Dance section, which I didn't care at all that they opened with. I don't care about it. I've never played Just Dance, but they did it and got it out of the way. Didn't talk about it. Let's move on. It, it was a good conference. Uh, next up, Sony. Uh, they're good for them. Last of Us 2. It looked really good. I'm just about to finish up Last of Us 1. I know I'm way behind on this. But uh, yeah, Last of Us 2 looked great. looked brutal. Uh, Ellie looks like an interesting character still. Uh, I'm excited to see what's going on with Joel. How old is he now? Uh, what's he looking like? Uh, why haven't they shown him yet? Like he's obviously still alive, but I don't know. They they've like made a quick mention to him in the trailer, but haven't actually shown him. So I don't know if he'll actually be that involved with the game. He might just be like a side character. Um, Spider-Man looked awesome. Uh, I mean, this is Insomniac making a Spider-Man game. 
we all knew that this was pretty much a perfect match made in heaven, right? Um, not much to say on that. Uh, it looks like the Sinister Six will be villains in it. Uh, bring it on. I can't wait to play that game later this year. Uh, Ghost of Tsushima. Uh, this is a new IP by Sucker Punch. Uh, I thought the game looked great. It looked very beautiful. Um, it reminded me a lot of God of War just watching it. I don't know. Maybe it's because I've just had God, um, God of War on my mind all year since I've played it. Um, if it's anything like that, it, it's going to be fun. Uh, that game definitely looks interesting and good. Uh, the bad for Sony. Uh, the banjo and windpipe section. Uh, before Last of Us 2 started... They, play, they had a guy playing a banjo, and before it goes to Tsushima, they had a guy playing a windpipe. And this was just very awkward and not well thought out, I don't think. Like, I get that they applied to the games that were about to be shown, but it just didn't work. I didn't like it. It was... I don't know. I was just sitting there like, okay, come on, let's get on with this. Uh, this is going on way too long. I was not that happy with either of those sections. Um, also, on the bad, the Justin Rowland game. Why is that game even being shown off here? They they didn't have time to talk about Days Gone besides, again, saying the announce... talking about the announcement of the release date, which they did earlier in the week. So, they cut... I want to say they cut Days Gone out of their conference to show a Justin Roland game. Is that how you say his name? Roland? I don't know. I'm not much of a Rick and Morty fan. I, I've never seen it. I guess I can't say I'm not a fan. I've just never seen it. But why is this game being shown over something like Days Gone, which is a first party game, which is something that they've said they've believed in for a while. This is telling me that either they don't believe in it anymore or Justin Roland. Roland or whoever owns that company was offering a lot of money to be shown at E3. Uh, it was like some game, someone saves the world and it had a bathtub guy and he dies at the end. I don't know. It looked like that typical Justin Roland humor. Uh, I didn't care about it and it really made me wonder why was this here? but something like Days Gone, or even just PSVR titles. Like, just put in a string of VR titles there and it works. Uh, I don't know, that was a very odd decision. Um, the ugly for the Sony is definitely the ugliest thing that happened was the conference delay. Uh, when they started, they had everyone in this tent that looked like a church, uh, the I can't remember his name. The Sony boss uh, kept talking about how uh, this is uh, this is our church and blah blah blah. We're gonna do things very different. Focus on four games. Awesome, cool, whatever. Got it out of the way. But as soon as The Last of Us gets done playing, which is the first game they show off, they take an intermission that lasted about twenty minutes to move everyone from the tent into the theater, like. You couldn't have just set up some decorations in the theater itself to make it look like the church. Like, this was a complete waste of time. And it was completely awkward. Uh, they just had, like at the beginning, they had uh, the announcer guy, I don't know what he is, uh, the Sony boss guy, sitting at this desk with other guys that you would see like in a pre or post show for E3. So these are Sony employees interviewing a Sony boss. Yeah, this isn't biased at all like it was just dumb like they're sitting here looking for things to talk about they shown off a black ops 4 trailer that new maps are coming cool i like that i really love the first black ops game and i was excited to see some of my favorite maps come back but that's something you could have shown in the week leading up to e3 uh the destiny 2 trailer okay k6 is dying and it's an expansion Okay, that's something you could have shown in the week leading up to it. You had nothing else to show me in Days Gone or uh, the Tetris VR game or any of those things. Like, all they did was say, hey, by the way, we announced this earlier this week. And they showed us nothing new on it. This was a complete waste of time. 
It was awful. It was in the first half hour of the conference, we saw one game, Last of Us. And we saw that for about 10, 15 minutes. Like, come on, guys. It, that was awful. I hope they never do that again. Uh, my last ugly part for the Sony conference has to do with The Last of Us. I thought there were moments in the gameplay that looked scripted. Uh, it looked awesome, but the way Ellie was moving during certain sequences just looked scripted to me. It didn't look like actual gameplay. Um, I could be completely wrong, and I hope I'm wrong. That would be awesome, but some of the ways she just moved, like grabbing the person, they get shot, she looks at him, looks back up, and then drops him. Like, that's not something that you do in actual gameplay. They get shot, and then you just drop them, and you go on. Like, I just... It was just little things like that. It just looked off to me. Like, her getting thrown through the glass didn't look like it was actually in gameplay the way the camera moved. Uh, I thought it was scripted. But, I could be wrong. But, it's just what I thought when I first saw it. Very excited for Last of Us 2 still. Um, that would leave me the giving Sony a B plus. Uh, Last of Us 2, Spider-Man, and Ghost of Tsushima were definitely the biggest draws for me. Death Stranding, I didn't. I'm not much of a Kojima fan, but I was watching that just going, what the fuck is this? Who knows? Um, I don't know. I just didn't care about Death Stranding. But those other three games I thought did great. I would have liked to see a little more on Days Gone or any of the things that they announced leading up to E3. That delay was terrible. There were The beginning was just bad, I thought. Um, take out that conference delay and take out the Justin Rowland game and actually put in stuff that Sony fans would care about. And I give this... This would probably be my conference of the year. But it just had so many... Or not so many, but some big mess-ups. So I would give Sony a B+. Um, in top two of my conferences for E3 is Nintendo. Am um, I good for them? Of course, with Smash. Uh, every single fighter ever is coming back. They showed off Ridley. They gave us Daisy. A uh, bunch of different tweaks. Uh, it is a new game. It's coming with all this stuff and I'm excited. A little disappointed that we're waiting until December. Take your time, Sakurai. Get it done. Uh, get that online working. I'm excited for it either way. I thought it was coming out in September. I'm really ex uh, disappointed to see it come out in December, but I'm still ready for it. Uh, this game is going to be awesome. I can't wait to play it on my Switch. I could go all day just talking about Smash right now, but just to save you guys the time, let's just go with, uh, I'm excited. Let's go. Uh, next up, Fortnite, uh, being available right now, or it wasn't right now, it was like downloading an hour or two. Uh, I haven't downloaded it, I don't really plan on it, but, because I'm not much of a Fortnite or Battle Royale guy, but I think it was just key for Nintendo to get this game on their console. It's definitely the biggest game in the world right now, and just having it everywhere is just good for everyone involved. Uh, I'm not the only one that it's not good for is PUBG. Um, yeah, it's uh, I don't know, it's Fortnite. Have fun with it, guys. Uh, there is cross compatibility, which is also awesome. Sony, get on that. Um, next up, uh, my biggest surprise with the Nintendo conference was uh, Super Mario Party being announced. I was not expecting a new Mario Party anytime soon, and the fact that we got one, and it looks like classic Mario Party, where you're hitting dice, and you're not all in one car. It looked like there were stakes to it. It looked like it had fun. It looked like it could destroy friendships. I'm excited for this. Uh, it's coming October 5th. Uh, I can't wait to play it. It's been a long time since I've played a good Mario Party game. Uh, so I'm definitely excited for more Mario Party. Uh, I hope there's a direct later this summer that goes into goes more into it, like kind of gives us a, a little preview of 
some mini games or boards and who all more is playable. It looked like you could play as Bowser, which was odd. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely, definitely excited for that game. Uh, the bad for Nintendo. No Yoshi. Uh, I'll also throw in here no Metroid Prime 4, even though I didn't really expect much from it because that game's a long way off. But, uh, so here, let's get Metroid out of the way. Uh, so now it's last year, all it gave was a logo. They, they haven't talked about it since then. I, it doesn't really surprise me. This game is a long way off, but I know there were a lot of people that were looking forward to it. They'll get to it when they get to it. Uh, it's definitely being made in, I don't know, probably, I would think it's going to probably release early 2020, late 2019 at the earliest. Who knows? Uh, sorry, fans of Metroid, but that just didn't happen. Uh, I was really disappointed, though, to see no Yoshi. They announced Yoshi, I want to say, at E3 last year, and we don't even have a name for it yet. There's no timetable for when it's coming out. Like, they just said they were focusing on the games coming, like, the end of this year, beginning of next year. So how far out is Yoshi, and why was it shown last year, then? Uh, or maybe it wasn't last year. Maybe it was earlier this year. No, it was shown the same time as Kirby. So yeah, it was last year. Um, I'm just disappointed to not even get a name for Yoshi. Uh, it just was a complete no-show. Like, where is it? <laughs> I don't know. Bring my Yoshi back. Um, the ugly for Nintendo. Uh... No explanation on coming soon games. Um, they had a little segment in their stream where they showed off a bunch of games coming. There were like indies, there was Mario Tennis in there, uh, another version of Minecraft, which then the Switch already has Minecraft, so I'm guessing this is the Realms update, so it's cross, uh, it's, it'll be the crossplay with Xbox. That's just a complete guess, but they didn't go into it at all. We have no idea what's up with that. Uh, they showed off this arcade game that everyone's excited about, like Killer Queen Beehive something. Uh, I don't know. It's something I want to look into more, but uh, I there's no arcades around where I live, so I've never played it. But apparently it's a really good arcade game. Um I just would have liked more explanation into the games that were shown off in that scissor reel. Like, Mario Tennis, like, even if it's just a reminder, hey, Mario Tennis is coming out this month, and you can play as this, 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 this. Uh, this is what the courts look like. Uh, there's a tournament going here, and blah, blah, blah. For a game that's coming out in nine days, I think? Uh, it was very odd to see nothing mentioned on it whatsoever. But, uh... Whatever, it's Nintendo. Uh, so overall, I would give Nintendo an A-. Uh, the Smash was... This was definitely the Super Smash Brothers show. Yeah. It's what we needed to see. Uh, was disappointed not to see Moriyoshi, and it wasn't the best Nintendo Direct I've ever seen, but I really enjoyed it, and I'm excited for Smash. So that leaves off my best conference as Microsoft. Uh, the good for them, 50 games, 18 exclusives, 15 uh, reveals, I believe is the announcement that they made at the beginning. Uh, everyone's always complaining about Microsoft, or the Xbox doesn't have any games to play. And then Microsoft said, hey, dude, here's 50 games coming out. Last year we showed like 44. There are plenty of games to play on the Xbox, and you're... <laughs> They're good games, too. There was a lot in here I was looking forward to. Uh, the reveal of Halo Infinite, awesome. Gears 5, I, I have to get caught up still, but awesome. I know there's a lot of fans of that series. Jump Force, I thought, looked awesome. That Tunic game looked awesome. There was a lot in here that was really good, and I thought Microsoft, at all points, had a very good cons uh, conference. I almost said concert. Uh... It was very exciting. I think Phil Spencer has done a great job with that team. Uh, my other my other big uh, good point is the five game developers they bought. Uh, this was the acquirement of uh, 
Playground, Ninja Theory, Compulsion. Was it four or five? Because there was also a new company in there. I can't remember their name. It might have just been four, not five. Uh, this was huge for them. Uh, you need more companies making more games, different games. Uh, we know Battletoads is coming back. Who knows who's making that? Maybe it's the new company. Uh, no, they would have put their name in there. I don't know. Uh, I just... It, it was huge for them to announce more game developers under the first party tree that Microsoft actually owns. Uh, it's awesome. I'm, it makes me really excited for the future. Uh, and then also Tunic looks awesome. Legend of Zelda. I'm a huge Zelda fan. Uh, the bad for... Uh, Microsoft was while I'm excited that they showed off Halo Infinite they didn't give us anything with it. All Phil said I think was this is Master Chief's greatest journey yet or something like all they did was show a confusing trailer that had us all wondering what the hell it even was like it was just different wildlife and then you see a Halo ring in the distance or like the ring going around the world, duh. Uh, and then you see Master Chief holding his helmet. Okay, cool. At least give me a release year. Not even that? Okay. Uh, just anything would have been cool. Just, hey, it's coming out in 2019. It's coming out in 2020. Uh, it's... Uh, what's his name? Guy from Halo 5. Uh, the other... Oh, it's not his name. I can't think of it. Oh, this is gonna bug me. The guy that was hunting Master Chief in Halo 5. Oh no, I can't think of it. I can't think of it. Prophet, no, that's Crisis. Buck is the white guy. Uh, okay, I can't think of his name. That's how forgettable he is. Uh, tell me he's dead. <laughs> can, can he just die like at the beginning of Halo Infinite? Uh, yeah, I, I'm i excited for more Halo, but I really would have liked anything besides, hey, Halo's coming. Okay, cool. Thanks, Microsoft. Never would have seen that one coming. Uh, the only ugly section I have for Microsoft was the Game Pass section of this show, which... It's cool that they had, like, the boss of Game Pass come out and talk about, hey, this is what we're doing and everything, and Fast Start. Cool. Fast Start sounds awesome. I believe this whole section could have been taken care of with a quick trailer. Just, like, run through all the games that are available on Game Pass, uh, talk about how it's a streaming service, talk or it's not a streaming service, talk about uh, how cheap it is a month and how awesome uh, first-party games come here instantly. Uh, was very disappointed to see Master Chief Collection not here, available now. Um, I really was expecting them to say, Hey, remember all those updates we talked about with the Master Chief Collection, the 4K updates, and we're fixing it? It's available now. Go get it on Game Pass. That would have been awesome. But no, it, they were giving us, Hey, it's coming out sometime this summer. And they didn't even talk about the updates which I think they talked about doing like a year ago now. So it's been a long time coming. Uh, I was very disappointed in that. But all that aside, I gave Microsoft an A. Not an A+, just an A. Very good conference. It was probably their best conference ever. And I'm just... Grow I grow more and more impressed with Phil Spencer every year. I love the dude. He's done an awesome job since taking over for Microsoft and I'm really excited to see uh, where we're going from here, the new titles, new franchises, whatever is coming. Uh, not, not just him, but Nintendo and Sony. Like, This is such an awesome time to be a gamer. Microsoft is really recovering from a slow start to this generation. Nintendo is recovering from the Wii U fiasco and the Switch has just done awesome. Sony's been on fire. They've kind of had their, eh, but nothing bad or anything. They've just, they've been Sony. Uh, those three teams, com uh, companies, whatever you want to say, 
it's just awesome thinking about what these three companies can do moving forward with VR, new technologies, streaming services that are to come, more consoles in the future, uh, Nintendo's portable, Sony's VR. Like, it's just awesome stuff. Uh, bring back HoloLens, Microsoft. That was awesome. Like, it's just awesome seeing what they're doing now. It's really cool, and I can't wait to see more. But, uh... That's my breakdown of all the conferences at 2018 E3. Uh, let us know what yours were. Uh, what what grades would you give them? Uh, how much do you disagree with me? What did I leave out uh, for each conference? Uh, give me your list. Like just comment down below. Uh, also, be sure to check out that video game blog for mine and a bunch of other awesome people's writings. Uh, I'm right now reviewing a small little PS4 game, but there's a ton of other reviews on there, a ton of other E3 news announcements that people are taking care of on there. It's some really awesome stuff. Uh, if you like the video, be sure to leave a like, comment down below. Like I said, what you thought about e what you've thought about E3 so far. There's still more to come, more gameplay and everything. Uh, share with some friends, get us out there a little bit, uh, and thanks so much for watching. I'm John Hansen. I'm out.